Okay. Welcome to the today's discussion. It will be physics paper two. Uh, we are starting with the first question. I will read the question and then uh, we shall proceed discussing on how to respond to the question. Okay. Question number one, welcome uh, part A to Roman one. Today's discussion states that uh, uh, asks uh, asks you to state the principle on which Bernoulli's theorem okay, students, is based. Who, therefore, we need you are to asked use to state the principle on which Bernoulli's principle is based. You uh, you are aware or you know that uh, Bernoulli's principle relates the speed of a moving fluid that is a liquid or a gas with the pressure within the liquid or gas. So the law simply uh, states that uh, as the speed of a moving fluid, a liquid or gas increases, the pressure within that fluid will always decrease. I'm just stating it, um, but the question wants you to say in what, uh, uh, in what principle does this Bernoulli's uh, principle base? So I said the principle itself states that uh, as the speed of a fluid increases, then the pressure within that fluid decreases. And this principle is based on the principle of conservation of energy. The Bernoulli, Bernoulli's uh, principle is based on the principle of conservation of energy. That, that, that is uh, the response to the first question, part A, Roman 1. Roman 2 of the same part says, why does the speed of a fluid, uh, why does the speed of a liquid increase and its pressure decrease when the liquid passes through a constriction in a pipe. Why does the speed of a liquid increase and its pressure decrease when a liquid passes through a constriction in a pipe? Uh, to respond to this one, we shall use the, the Bernoulli's principle Since it bases on the conservation of uh, energy, we can write uh, pressure at point one plus a half uh, density, velocity at point one squared plus, uh, equals to the pressure at point two and uh, added with half the density times velocity squared but at point two. So we can just think of the two points as, um, 
uh, as this. Uh, let me consider this point to be point 0.2 and somewhere here to be uh, point 0.1. So uh, as you can see, the cross-sectional areas for uh, a pipe at point 0.1 and point 0.2 are different where you see the cross-sectional area at point 0.2 is uh, pretty smaller than that at point 0.1. And as the continuity requires, we know area say at point one times velocity at point one must equal uh, to area at point two times velocity at point two. Which of course means that the product area times velocity must be conserved. And so if area is large, we expect the velocity to be um, uh, 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 smaller. And the value for velocity, say V2, must be larger to uh, compensate for the smaller area at point 2. And so when the pressure uh, is high, when the pressure is high, uh, liquid velocity usually is low. When the pressure is high, and we expect for this case at this point to uh, have a high, uh, 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 the velocity must be high. And so we expect here the pressure to be low. When the pressure is high, velocity will be low. Pressure uh, velocity here is high, we expect the velocity to be low, uh, the pressure to be low. Here, the velocity is low, we expect the pressure to be high. So, P1 is expected to be high because the velocity is low. At this point, we expect the velocity to be uh, uh, high or large. And so we expect P2 to be low. And so uh, 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 using uh, this condition and taking it to here, you will see that you will see that um, the speed of the liquid, as the speed of the liquid increases, then it, its pressure. Uh, will decrease when it reaches uh, at a constriction. I repeat, when the velocity is low, pressure will be high. So at this point, we expect because the cross-sectional area, according to the continuity uh, relation, the cross-sectional area here is large, and so we expect the velocity to be low. And if the velocity is low, then we expect the pressure to be high. On the other side here at point two, we expect, because the area is small, the cross-sectional area, we expect the velocity to be uh, high. And if the velocity is high, we expect the pressure at that point to be low. And so we have used two uh, uh, ideas here. We have used the Bernoulli's um, principle and we have also used the continuity continuity relation. where we have uh, used the continuity relation to establish the relationship 
between the cross-sectional area and the velocity and we have used the Bernoulli's principle to relate um, the pressure and the velocity. Okay, that is the response to question number uh, one, part A, Roman two. Question number one, part B, Roman one. The question reads, if two ships are moving parallel and close to each other, they experience an attractive force. Why? I repeat, if two ships are moving parallel and close to each other, they experience an attractive force. You are required to explain why. Let me just erase this one. Part B, Roman 1. say two ships are moving uh, parallel and close to each other you are asked why do you expect the ships to attract uh, one another the idea is that um, as the ships go closer to one another, the hydrodynamic interactions take place. In a case that the cross-sectional area between them is getting smaller and smaller. And then, as we concluded from the first part uh, the, the, the last uh, item of the question as the velocity or as the cross-sectional area of course of the air that is uh, between the, the, the two, sh two ships because we are sure that there will be uh, air movement between, uh, between the, the ships. So if you uh, consider the, the part okay or the place or the position before you uh, you reach the the ships it's like air was moving very freely very freely because the area is uh, quite uh, large but when the air mo reaches the point where the uh, between the two ships it's like the cross section area between them is now uh, small and so the movement of the air will be very fast. That means the speed of the air will be very fast. And if the speed now gets very fast, the V goes up, the speed increases. It means, as we said previously, the pressure between the two ships will decrease. And if the pressure between the two ships decreases, we know there is a tendency of, now if the pressure at this point decreases, there is a tendency of air moving, being, comp being pressed to move towards the point of lower pressure. So likewise, if the pressure decreases here, there is a tendency of air being Move, uh, air moving towards the point of uh, low pressure and therefore the air will be pushing this ship towards the point of low pressure and likewise uh, the air on the other side the air on the other side will be uh, pushing this ship towards because the air is moving towards the point of low pressure and so, so therefore these two ships tend to uh, attract to experience a force that uh, attracts them together.
so that is um, a, in a nutshell a response to uh, that question if I, I may put it in some simple writing um, air velocity between between uh, okay in the narrow gap in the narrow gap between the ships increases the ships the ships uh, increases and therefore the pressure decreases the pressure decreases and so the out the 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 pressure on the outer surface or the on the the the, the outer on the outer surface mm, exceeds that of that between the ships and therefore ships are pulled towards one another. So this is just to summarize what I've been, I have just explained. That was question number uh, one, part B, Roman one. Let's go to question number one, part B, Roman two. The question says, an empty vessel is open at the top and has a horizontal capillary tube of length 20 centimeters and internal radius one millimeter that protrudes from one of its side walls immediately above the base. Water flows into the vessel at a constant rate of 1.5 uh, centimeter cubed per second and you are asked to find the depth uh, of water uh, you asked at what depth does the water level stop rising required to find the depth at which the water level will stop rising uh, here we will use the the Poiseuille's Poiseuille's formula we will use the Poiseuille's formula that is part B and before we apply the formula let us consider just see the sketch um, that reflects the the question. So I can just assume it is as low as uh, as that, and uh, I can just think of water, say, being released from somewhere, and so. Just consider this tank uh, like having a height uh, H. Of course, this height must be to the point where you find uh, the exit. So here are the dimensions of uh, this exit pipe. 
we have the radius equal to the radius is given as uh, 20 oh, no no the radi uh, that is the radius is 1 times 10 it is 1 millimeter which is 1 times 10 power minus 4 I think power minus power minus 3 of a meter and uh, we know the the uh, the length the length of course should be the length here is uh, two cent uh, 20 centimeters which is of course 2 times 10 power minus 1 meters and so we apply uh, the Poiseuille's uh, consider using the Poiseuille's formula Poi. The formula relates the velocity, uh, the, the, the volume, being equal to, of course, T is the volumetric rate, equal to pi times change in pressure times the radius raised by 4 divided by 8 times the coefficient of viscosity times the length. This is the uh, Poiseuille's uh, formula. So we are going to uh, use uh, this formula. Well, this is, we, as we stated, this is the volumetric uh, rate, which means it is the volume per second volume per time and uh, and so recall we uh, we know that uh, let me just write it here where delta p is equal to for this case m g h uh, it is the density rho gh. So if we substitute back uh, the delta p, we are going to have uh, pi rho gh r power 4 divided by 8 eta times l. And from there, we can determine the height h. And making h the subject, if we make h the subject, we'll be having h equal to 8 eta l times v, the volumetric rate, divided by pi rho r power 4. We can simply substitute and have it is 8 times 1.5. Remember, V is equal to uh, 1.5 uh, centimeter power 3 uh, the centimeter cubed per second. So I have that one times 10 power minus 2. Of course, this is just to transform this one to to transform uh, the 1.5 centimeter cubed to meter cubed. 
we have that one. Then times 10 power minus 3. The 10 power minus 3 is simply the radius uh, of the radius. No, no, the radius is down here. So this one is uh, times 10 power minus 3. Uh, this one, okay. Let me check this. Times 10 power minus 3, see. Uh, this is 10 uh, centimeter cubed times 10 power minus 3, it's okay. Times 2 times 10 power minus 1 divided by pi times the density which is uh, taken a thousand, the density of water times 9.8 times 1 times 10 power minus 3 power 4. Okay, so half this is 8 the volumetric rate times 10 power minus 3 because that okay the value that uh, you will be getting just check if you have that and should be 0 0.078 uh, meters 8 uh, 0.078 meters Okay. Let's see question number one, part um, question number one, part C. Question number one, part C, that is that. Here we have just substituted uh, 8, which is this. We have 1.5 times this, uh, which is, OK. This one is the, uh, let me just show it clearly. Uh -huh. This one is uh, the 8, it's okay. This one here is the volumetric rate, 1.5, which is converted to vo uh, the, 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 the a meter cubed, the meter cubed, the cubic meter. And this one takes the the uh, eta, uh, the eta, which is the coefficient of um, viscosity, which of course that the um, you are given as the uh, inf uh, useful information on the front page of your your question, uh, the the question paper which of course shows that uh, the coefficient of viscosity of water equals to 1 times 10 power minus 3 newton, uh, cent uh, newton second per meter squared. So this, is, this takes uh, the value for the coefficient of viscosity and this is uh, the length which is of course this one, the length 2 times 10 power minus 2. So it's now okay. That's where you get uh, finally you get that result. Uh, part, uh, part C, Roman 1, the question asks, explain why machine parts are jammed during winter. You are required to explain 
why machine parts usually jam during winter mm. the idea is that um, usually the machine parts are lubricated uh, or they are greased and um, usually grease the viscosity of grease is a function of temperature so uh, when the temperature increases usually the viscosity decreases and you can um, testify this one by considering honey for example if you have honey in a container and uh, you, you, you have it warmed, usually it becomes m uh, less viscous than the case when honey is uh, cold. So the same applies to uh, such uh, machine parts which are greased. So when temperature increases, uh, the viscosity of the grease usually um, decreases and so it's like they they can easily move uh, 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 against one another but when the temperature is low the grease the vis viscosity of grease uh, uh, decreases and when the viscosity decreases it becomes hard for the two parts to be uh, for uh, interacting parts to move against one another and so they can easily jump they can easily get jammed so to put it in um, summarized writing that is part c roman one is that during winter the temperature is low and as a result and as a result engine oil engine oil which of course could take the place of, of grease the one I have been uh, explaining and the, the engine oil behaves the same likewise if it gets cold the viscosity uh, in, uh, decreases and if the viscosity decreases then the movement becomes hard and so engine oil or like all grease or grease between uh, the two parts grease I don't know grease I think it is written this way grease you will just correct me if I've written it not very correct correctly. Um, the grease uh, becomes uh, more viscous in this sense. So the engine oil or the grease has a high high viscosity let me repeat uh, to emphasize we said if honey is warm it means its viscosity goes low if honey is cold its viscosity goes high 
So for this case, look at this. If the temperature is low, the viscosity is high. It means it is more viscous, more heavy. If, I think I have made the, the analog uh, very clear. I want just to make an analog of honey and uh, the, uh, the engine oil. So if the temperature re relative to honey, if the temperature is high, the thing becomes less viscous. Yes, which means the viscosity goes low. But if temperature uh, uh, goes low, the viscosity will be high, just as this case. The engine oil, if the temperature, uh, the temperature is low, the, the viscosity is high. It means uh, the, the oil will be more viscous, which means it is very hard to like for uh, the, the, the parts to move against one another and therefore they can easily be jammed. Um, the second part of the question that is Roman 2 uh, reads Roman 2 reads a cylindrical tank with large diameter is filled with water to a depth uh, D equals to uh, let me just sketch uh, the tank just as I did the first case. Uh, let me just also consider there is an, an exit and the tank is filled uh, uh, is filled with water to a depth of I just think of the depth from here to here is 0 0.3 meters and uh, and uh, a hole of cross-sectional area of a I'm just thinking just this one to be a hole this hole has a cross-sectional area of 6.5 centimeters uh, squared in the bottom of course it is somewhere at the bottom around the bottom of the tank and it allows water to drain out what is the drainage rate you are required to uh, determine the drainage drainage rate Here, the best um, approach to respond to this one will start with the Bernoulli's, uh, the Bernoulli's principle. And so, um, the Bernoulli's equation is written as, for this case, we consider um, somewhere where the height, the, to wh to the point to which the tank is, is filled, say a height H and so at this point say we'll be saying point 0.1 to be point 0.1 and then we'll be having point 0.2 here. This is this was the diameter so it is uh, diameter the diameter the, the whole cross sectional area this is the area cross-sectional area okay and so we are the Bernoulli's uh, the Bernoulli's equation the ben, the Bernoulli's, Bernoulli's equation can be written as P1 is equal to, uh, P1 plus a half Rho V1 squared plus Rho GH1 will be equal to P2 plus a half Rho V2 squared plus Rho 
G H two. Okay, we are sure uh, this point. Of course, we are not told this this tank is covered, and so we just assume it is not uh, covered, so that the the top part is exposed to a, the atmosphere and also the orifice the point at which water is getting drained is exposed to the atmosphere and therefore the uh, pressure one pressure at point one will be equal to pressure at point two p1 will be equal to p2 and if we because uh, we are sure that the the velocity of um, water leaving the tank will be very high compared to the velocity with which the uh, water in the big tank in the big tank is moving and so we can think of uh, we can assume assume that the velocity for the uh, the water in the big tank velocity v1 will be equal to approximately zero very small the velocity will be very small and if we take that assumption then we can re rewrite our equation as uh, rho g h1 is equal to a half rho uh, v2 squared plus rho g h2 and uh, having that uh, written we can make v the subject v2 for that case equal to um, rho g h one I can take H one minus H two uh -huh. H one minus H two then of course I have to multiply because I'm divided I have to multiply and of course the the row gets uh, off because there is row here row here and row here I can just cancel them so that I'll be having uh, the G g uh, 2g 2 times g and then finally of course i'll be having the root so v uh, v2 will be equal to the root of 2g h1 minus h2 h1 minus h2 and remember uh, this could be considered as the h2 the height to which the hole is uh, is is made and then this other one from that point to that other point that is the h1 so h1 minus h2 will simply give us uh, 0 0.3 where h1 minus h2 is equal to 0 0.3 meters and so substituting all the values we are getting v2 is equal to um, the root of 2 times g 9.8 times uh, 0 0.3 meters the result of this is 2.42 meters per second that is the velocity at this point the velocity v2 with which the water is uh, getting drained out of the tank now the question um, uh, asked us to uh, to to determine the rate at which the uh, water is being drained the rate is uh, 
let me call, call it Q, the rate for this point at which water is getting drained will be V, the velocity at that point, times the cross-section uh, at that point. That will give us the, will give us the, the rate. And so if you substitute 6.5 that we are given, we just change it to um, uh, meters. We have power 4 meters squared, then times the velocity, that is 2.42 meters. If you compute, you are going to get 1.6 uh, uh, times 10 times, times, let me write it here, 1.6 times 10 power minus 3 meters cubed per second. And we were asked to, to write the answer in meter, meters cubed. So that will be the case. Just one minute. Um, then finally, we were asked to compute the to co uh, compute the uh, the the distance uh, below which the tank uh, will have the cross sectional area equal to one half the area of the hole. Here, you will just use the same from the same the, the equation of course we shall consider another point where we will call it point three and so if we have point three it means we'll be having a half uh, rho v2 squared plus rho gh2 equal to a half rho uh, v3 squared plus rho gh3 relating the our point and the point which is assumed and so what we are required to determine is similar to the h1 minus h2 we are required to determine h2 minus h3 and so we can make uh, it the subject from here since we are we are given uh, that Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is um, we are given uh, that the velocity. No, wait a minute. Here we will use a different. Uh, let's let's get first the volume. We have to use the continuity the continuity continuity equation. relating area a1 and velocity for this case we will have to consider the th the second the th third point assume it to be anywhere say at this point point number three so we'll be having the area and equate it with the point that we know the volume uh, the the velocity and area and so we can determine the velocity v3 after we know the velocity v3 then we shall apply the Bernoulli's uh, equation by writing a half rho v3 squared plus rho g h3 is equal to a half rho uh, v2 squared plus uh, rho g h2 so since we have already determined V3 from this equation, we will substitute V3 here and finally determine the difference between H2 and H3. We shall um, finish up this part uh, next time.